25 everyday hacks to make Minecraft easier. When you play as much Minecraft as we do, then any little tip or trick to save time or energy can really add up. So to that point, here are some of the simple solutions to solve your everyday Minecraft problems. And hey, YouTube bets that you can't subscribe to the channel before I hit the ground. So to prove them wrong, land on that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one, Minecraft is a game famous for its random generation, but that doesn't mean we can't tip the scales in our favor. So if you only got one sapling and you're looking for more bang for your buck, maybe try this. Sure enough, all it takes a few blocks along the plant's edge like so to guarantee that we'll get a big oak like this one. And if you've played Skyblock, I'm sure you can already find a use for this. So if you're tired of populating your forest with a couple of small something or others, this could be your perfect fix. Number two, rivers can be a beautiful backdrop to your future builds. But while they look nice in the day, they can quickly turn problematic at night. And the drowned mobs make sure of that. So that means we need some way to light up our lake bed. And while things like glowstone or sea lanterns could definitely work, those are expensive to come by, especially if you need them in bulk. So instead, why don't we opt for this pickle pariah. No joke, four of these in one block give off more light than a torch. And since they're so easy to farm, you'll have plenty to solve your problem. Number three. By this point, we all know it's important to stay on the piglin's good side. And while that's usually a problem gold can solve, that isn't as true while raiding bastions. So to get the loot without angering the pigmen, we'll need to get creative. See, since their behavior checks for any chests that are open or broken into in the proximity, we need to get the items out in some other way. But luckily, all we need is a hopper underneath to drain the items, and then we can break that to score our stuff, making it a must-have on your search for pig stuff. Number four, skeleton farms are quite the asset to have on hand, but while they're useful for bone meal and arrows like so, there might be a way to make it even better. See, as some have pointed out, the strays have a better loot table than our typical skeletons. So even though they're missing a spawner of their own, all we need is a well-placed powdered snow block to turn our skeleton farm into one for strays. And when you see the kind of results that Ray's work shows off, it's pretty clear to see that this is worth your while, especially when it's this easy to do. Number five, item storage is a common problem. And while chests are the most obvious solution, they're not exactly a looker especially if you hoard a bunch of items like me. So to solve your item crisis without causing a building fiasco, it might be time to offer barrels. And I think this is a pretty elegant solution for those. See, since the beds aren't a full block, we can still interact with the blocks behind. And by using some barrels, we can get a decorative headboard and some extra room for your midnight snacks, which seems like a better fit than having yet another chest monster. Number six, finding a desert temple is a fun surprise. A fun surprise that's usually bogged down by the time it takes to steal the treasure. Because let's face it, the pressure plate isn't much of a trap for anyone past their day one. So we normally know how to dismantle the thing. But what if we use that TNT inside for something of a grand heist? Sure enough, if we break the block underneath, grab the TNT, and then ignite one up top, we can use the newly fashioned hole to keep us safe and properly loot all of the chests at the same time. Number seven. This might shock you, but in a game called Minecraft, we have to do a lot of mining. I know, I was surprised too. But even though we have that necessary evil, that doesn't stop us from finding a few shortcuts. And this fits the bill. Odd as it may seem, it's a verifiable fact that you mine faster when standing at max reach distance than opposed to up close. And over time, that bit of extra speed can add up quick. So while it might be tough to keep at that distance the whole time, it's definitely worth trying next time you're down deep. Number eight, when you get a pet of Minecraft, the first act of business is giving it a name. But if you aren't a treasure hunter or a master with a fishing pole, the name tags are hard to come by. And while that should put us out of luck, there might be one last solution. See, if we were to take your new axolotl pal, place it in a bucket, and then rename that item in the anvil, then once we place it down, it actually retains the name. And if only we could do this for dogs too, then we'd be really sad. Number nine, explosives and water don't tend to mix, so that doesn't explain a site like this. And sure enough, it's entirely possible in vanilla to waterproof your TNT like so. And that answer hinges on one thing, sand. See, when you drop a gravity block into the same spot as a prime TNT entity, it no longer detonates underwater, but rather in something of an air pocket. And that means our TNT can function just as it does on the surface, giving us a solid way to terraform that lake by your house. And I mean, it's a lot flashier than a shovel. Number 10. Redstone isn't exactly straightforward, which is why, if you're anything like me, the less we use, the better. Better. So what if I told you there's a way to transmit signals instantaneously without ever using pistons? Well, wild as that might sound, it's actually surprisingly simple to pull off. See, since walls update their connectivity like so when you introduce a new hitbox, we can send that signal vertically to be detected by an observer. At which point, all it takes is a trapdoor like so to make a virtually instantaneous system without a degree in electrical engineering. And I'll gladly take that easy way out. Number 11. If you've ever played on a multiplayer server, you've likely come across this railroad dilemma. That being that minecarts can bump and interrupt one another on the same course. Meaning if you try to follow after a friend, you'll probably just throw off each other's momentum, which isn't ideal to say the least. So for a better way to explore that nether highway together, why not just add in a boat for good measure? With this, we can turn our solo cart into a tandem vehicle. And hey, it'll even let you steer as well, both of which are great to see. Number 12. Building in survival is obviously tougher than it is in creative mode. And part of that is the need for temporary blocks like dirt or scaffolding to reach certain angles. And while those do work, they do add in another step of cleanup to the process. So to handle this,
this a bit more elegantly, why not try out the 1.17 powdered snow bucket instead? Using one of these, we can get a block that not only we can place down for support, but also pick up for easy reuse. Just make sure to wear your leather boots. Otherwise, it won't do much good for support. Number 13. When you're playing in survival mode, it's a constant challenge to save resources. So while some things are more costly than others, it's good to cut back where we can. And in that case, let's do a bit of a public service announcement. Now, if you're someone who wants a vibrant selection of sheets for your bed, that's fine. Just make sure to dye your bed like this instead of using dyed wool. Is it a major change? Not at all. But hey, I'm always thankful to know a better way of doing things. And maybe you are too. Number 14. TNT is a quintessential ingredient in a Minecraft trap recipe. But while it works fine on its own, all it takes is five ingots of iron to really improve our results. See, unlike the regular TNT, these minecarts can detonate instantaneously on impact. So with a design like this user shows off, we can make a trap that not only explodes the player, but then explodes again to get rid of the items. And that, folks, is a different kind of cruel. But if you're at war with your friends, this might be the bit of information to tip the scales your way. Number 15. If you follow any professional builders, you're well aware that the blocks you least expect might just be the most useful. And this is no different. See, in the base game, there's currently no way to angle your wooden planks a certain way, meaning we're usually stuck to this one direction. Or we would be if we didn't have lecterns. Because once we put these planks into a crafting grid like so, we can use the bottom texture to get something of a rotated plank roof for our house. Which might look weird from above, but down here, it's definitely a nice change. Number 16. With the 1.13 update aquatic came the big change to our waterlogged blocks. And while those offer plenty of different ways to use them, this might be my favorite. See, when you waterlog a trap door, we get our very own mini floodgate to put to use. And that gives us something to use at our simple crop farm, or we could even do as this user shows and make a compact generator for both stone and cobblestone. So if you want stone, you flip it this way, and if not, the other side will do the trick for cobble. Number 17. Insta mining is one of the simple joys of Minecraft. And while it's a power trip for sure, it's not that easy to come by. So if you don't have the 1,477 ingots to make a full haste two beacon, we'll need to find some other way to level that mountain. And luckily, these lush caves can lend a hand. With one moss block and a chunk of bone meal, we can turn this lump of stone into a pile of plants. And from there, we don't need any endgame enchantments, a stone hoe will insta mine just the same. Number 18. Animal husbandry is a cornerstone in the Minecraft experience. But while it's straightforward to move a bunch of sheep or cattle, it's sometimes tedious. I mean, I doubt many of us are walking around with weed at all times. I'm definitely not. So to fix those pigs who got out of the pen, we could solve this simply by using a flint and steel. Sure enough, when lit on fire, these mobs are coded a pathfind to the nearest water source. Meaning a system like this is sure to have them relocate themselves, just as long as they don't become pork chops in the process. Number 19. By this point, I'd bet plenty of us are guilty of going AFK, and that's why a lot of farms and machines are built around leaving your game up and running. But while it's a necessity for those, going AFK can just as quickly turn into a nightmare. So to keep those hours of waiting from just ending in a respawn screen, let's try this instead. See, if we lay out a composter and then add a trapdoor lid like such, we can close the top and let ourselves survive the night without a problem, giving us the chance to AFK for yet another day. Number 20. When you take the time to build something beautiful in Minecraft, you'll rightfully want to show it off. But a screenshot like this doesn't do it justice. So to make sure your post looks the best for when you show it off to your friends on the subreddit, this guide might be your best bet. First, you'll find your area, then you lower your FOV to 30 for a better lens, and then max out the render distance so you don't have any unloaded chunks at the back. From there, add shaders if you'd like, but otherwise you can take a shot of your masterpiece. Number 21. Hunting for buried treasure is a time-honored tradition. But even though people have been doing this for centuries, that doesn't mean we need to spend centuries looking for your stuff. So to cut down the search time and cut right to the heart of the sea, pay attention to these two numbers. Once you line up in the general area of where the X marks the spot, check the F3 debug screen and find where it says chunk. Then, once you see that, have the numbers here and here both say 9. From that point, dig down and you'll reap the rewards. Simple as that. Number 22. Fall damage is no laughing matter. But that said, there are so many ways to avoid it that it's almost comical. And this one with the powdered snow might be my favorite. See, if you fall into powdered snow regularly, it breaks to fall as intended. Though, this even works with the carpet on top as you can see here, meaning we can make virtually unnoticeable landing pads in your next base. And it even works in the nether. So if you have the time to wait for your cauldron to fill up with snow, this might be the best way to save your legs going forward. Number 23. While Steve has some pretty deep pockets, that doesn't make moving items all that much fun to do. And it gets even worse when you're trying to move across an ocean to find a new biome home. So before we get shulker boxes and ender chests, we'll have to hire on some help early game. And luckily, these mules can do just that. See, since our boats are a two-seater, we can use the second slot to stash a bunch more items on the chest of a donkey. 
donkey, meaning we can narrow down the number of trips and have a ride when we arrive. Number 24, picture the situation. You just lost a fight to a horde of piglins in the nether, and then as you try to head back to pick up your stuff, you have to wait through the long and drawn out portal loading animation. It's an unnecessary stress, for sure. So to prevent against that, the answer is as simple as the dirt you got nearby. No joke, by chucking a couple of pieces of trash through the portal, we can cause the other side to load at a faster pace. And from there, we can head through and grab our stuff before the piglins do. Number 25, finding a fortress in the nether can be a grueling task. And during all that trial and error, it's easy to build up an appetite, which means we're probably crafting plenty of these mushroom stews. And while those are good, they aren't stackable. So we should stretch as much as we can out of one of these. And for my money, dandelions are the clear choice. And while I've sung the praises of dandelion suspicious stew in the past, I think this might be the clearest use for them. And when it's this easy to pack, it's a no brainer, especially when you get that much saturation. And with that folks, have a good one, all right?